Well, good evening. We're a little late tonight, but I want to talk about God, the grandfather and no man. That's God, the grandfather and no man. And this is your night whisper for the 9th of November. And our reading is going to be from Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 to 16. And it goes like this. So he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. In the Cohen Brothers 2003 film, Intolerable Cruelty, George Clooney, George Clooney rather, stars as Miles Massey, the cynical attorney, who is highly specialized in breaking marriages apart and making the divorce as profitable as profitable as possible for his client, regardless of their own personal culpability in the matter. Now then, the leading lady in the film is Catherine Zeta-Jones, who plays Marilyn Rexroth, a woman choosing to marry men who are exceptionally rich and astonishingly silly, and therefore very likely to commit adultery, thus giving her the excuse to divorce them so she can, in turn, then win a massive financial settlement that will make her independent of all men. The dialogue, the acting, the timing, the humour of the movie are, in my opinion, all quite brilliant and very Cohen-esque. The main speech of the film, in intolerable cruelty, concerns all the possibilities and vulnerabilities of true and selfless sacrificial love, and is made by the character Miles Massey at his keynote address, which is given at the annual convention of his professional association. The professional association is very cleverly called the National Organization of Matrimonial Attorneys Nationwide. <laughs> no man. I remember watching the movie and seeing their organizational logo and motto in the background of the main dialogue and emblazoned underneath it was the fictional association's most hilarious tagline. Here it is, what God has joined, let no man put asunder. I thought it was very clever and a hilarious contrivance, really, and I laughed considerably. In the real world, however, divorce is not funny at all, and it remains exceptionally painful for many years, oftentimes even a lifetime. There's very little laughter in it, I can tell you. Divorce remains financially painful. Divorce remains emotionally painful. Divorce remains relationally painful. And in my pastoral observance of it over the years, divorce remains painful for the rest of a person's life. Friend, there is no condemnation in my reading this to you tonight, in writing this tonight, because the saying, there but for the grace of God goes I, is true. And it most certainly applies to me and my wife of over 40 years. God has been very gracious to us. Indeed, when I am giving premarital counseling, I say that you need... 10 things for a successful marriage, your fingernails, because sometimes you just need to hang on, don't you? Yeah, I say to all people as well who are still married to their first spouse that God has been very gracious to you as well. My goodness me. Uh, I think about myself, my wife, you know, 40 years, two sinners living together for over 40 years and still together. Good grief, it's a bloody miracle. So we've got to be careful in our often unwarranted and sometimes very ignorant judgment of others, because none of us, none of us really knows what goes on between two people behind the closed doors of marriage. Nevertheless, the text for this evening, and in it, God says several important things to us and hangs them all on one massive nail. Did you get that? Here it is. I hate divorce. Indeed, listen to how the message brings this climactic statement to our attention. And here's a second offense, it says, you fill the place of worship with your whining and sniveling because you don't get what you want from God. Do you know why? Simple, 
because God was there as a witness when you spoke your marriage vows to your young bride, and now you've broken those vows. You've broken the faith bond with your vowed companion, your covenant wife. God, not you, made marriage. His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. And what does he want from marriage? Children of God. That's what. So guard the spirit of marriage within you. Don't cheat on your spouse. I hate divorce, says the God of Israel. God of angel armies says, I hate the violent dismembering of the one flesh of marriage. So watch yourselves. Don't let your guard down. Don't cheat. Divorce is indeed the violent dismembering of the one flesh of marriage. So watch yourselves tonight. Don't let your guard down. Don't cheat on your mate. And to help you and hopefully to heal you, I've got three little things for your consideration this evening. First, if you are divorced, well, there's no need to keep adding to your existing pains. Self-condemnation, anger at your former spouse and a multitude of other leather tales of self-flagellation will only make you bleed and fan the flames of hurt, keeping the wounds from healing. And it's time to heal. Get with God and get it sorted. Forgive yourself. Second, I want to tell you, especially those of you struggling in your marriage and after 40 years of experience, I can say that on some point, who isn't? that God is interested in marriage. Indeed, God is interested, immersed, and inhabiting all aspects of your marriage. Be aware of that. Prayerfully seek him then in every part of your marriage. I say every part of your marriage, for he will indeed help you in every part. Ask him. Third, don't mess up the covenant of marriage. And if you've messed up, then please don't keep messing up. The Bible here, I think, is particularly speaking to men. And I wonder if it is speaking to older, more well-off men, especially, I mean, older men who compared to their wives are more well-off financially, more well-off opportunistically, opportunistically, I can hardly say that, <laughs> more well-off physically, more well-off health-wise, maybe. Well, you see what I mean. In any event, to men in particular, I think the scriptures clearly speak tonight. Listen, don't be a traitor. Don't cheat on your wife. And he answered them and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So then they're no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Matthew 19, verse 4 till 6. Pray with me, please. Mercy then, Lord, please forgive us for our many sins and our traitorous hearts. Mercy, Lord, please. And despite our many sins, we ask that you wash us and make us clean, that you change us from traitors into people of honour and integrity and courage. Make us new, Lord, and make us stronger too. Yes, make us a testament to your grace and to your love and to your redemption, and do it in such a renewing, regenerating and revitalising way that your offspring would rise up amazed. Indeed, that they would rise up refreshed and call us godly parents. Mercy, Lord, mercy, for we wish to be godly and to give you the godly offspring of your heart's desire. So in Jesus' name, we ask for your help. Amen. And let it be so. Amen. And let it be so. So, dear friends, I hope you have a great weekend. What's left of it? Sunday tomorrow. Woohoo! And if you want to get behind us, then please go to give66.com. That's give66.com. Or you can go to my own personal Patreon account at uh, victorrobert.tv. That is victorrobert.tv. And with that, I'll say goodnight to you. Bye-bye.